Hi, I'm Inge Zegel and I'm a training and performance consultant here in Vancouver. I'm also a member of the Vancouver chapter of ISPI, the International Society for Performance Improvement. And I'd like to talk here today about performance improvement and also about performance improvement technology, which is often a very misunderstood concept. Specifically, I want to take a closer look at what we mean about when we talk about performance improvement and we're going to look at performance improvement through the lens of human performance technology which is sometimes a little bit of a misunderstood term so we're going to clarify that. Why do I want to talk about performance improvement? Because a lot of us, including people like myself, who are involved in providing training in the workplace are very concerned with how people perform in the workplace. The human capital in companies, the payroll, is usually a big part of the price tag that companies uh, pay for each year. And we want to make sure that we, we get value for the money that we invest in our people. We want them to perform well. Not just for the benefit of the company, because obviously if the people perform well, that means that the company is likely to increase sales, uh, have a higher revenue, therefore a higher profit. And if people perform well, it can also help reduce cost. Both of those things help improve the profitability of the company, which is ultimately the goal of a company. I think human performance, technology, human performance improvement is really important, not just to keep the company viable, but I also think for us individually, as people, we put an effort into our job, so the better we perform, the more satisfaction we can arrive from our work, also has a really personal benefit. So when we look at how to improve performance in the workplace, there are a number of things that uh, we get involved in in doing that. One of them, of course, is, is training, and that is sometimes the first thing we jump to when it comes to looking at improving performance. There are other things that we do, such as coaching, mentoring, team building, all kinds of activities that can result in improving human performance. But when we step back and look at what are all the factors that really affect human performance in the workplace, there are a number of factors that really have very little to do with the, uh, with the individual. At the top of the list, if we look at the model, is training and uh, providing training to people, improving the skills and the knowledge that people have. And most organizations uh, have a training and development group that is focused on this. But when we look at what makes people perform, we also need to look at the individual. Uh, we want to look at the capacity of the individual, their, their uh, physical and their mental capacity. This has more to do with the character, the personality. What does the person bring into the job? Are they the right fit for the job? Another thing we need to look at are the sort of the desires and the attitudes that the person brings into the job. And this is something that I maybe can influence, I can maybe work on the person's motivation, but I really need to look at that whole picture when it comes to improving people's performance. But in addition to that, Apart from the individual, there's a whole layer that underpins how well somebody performs and that really has to do with the organization and the environment in which the person operates. Some of the factors that we would look at when we're looking at or that we should look at when we're concerned with improving human performance are things such as what do we expect a person to do? Uh, do they know what, what we expect of them? How do we measure how well people perform? Another area that we want to look at is the culture of the organization, uh, the work processes, the resources. Do people have the resources that they need to do their job well? Um, are the work processes that they have to follow, are they conducive to high performance? And finally, another environmental factor is the whole, the whole aspect of, um, uh, of compensation, uh, the feedback that they get, and tied in with that is also the recruiting process. There are a number of things that have to happen at the organization level that really have a big, big impact on how people can perform. The six areas that I just identified and talked about really come from a model called the Behavior Engineering Model, which was developed by Thomas Gilbert, who is one of the fathers of performance improvement. And here we see those same six areas. And how these areas have been used is over the years a lot of research has been done uh, where we have surveyed people and asked them, do you feel you could perform your job better if... And then we asked them a number of questions that relate to these six areas. So we would ask them, for example, would you be able to perform your better if you received more training and to do your job? Or would you be able to perform better if your, your capabilities and your talents better suited the job? 
Or would you be able to perform better if you believed more in the value of the work, you were more motivated and you had more confidence that you could do better? Or would it be you would be able to perform better if you knew exactly what was expected of the job and if you had more specific feedback and your priorities were clear? Or would you be able to perform better if you had better tools or resources to work with or better procedures? Or would you be able to perform better if you had better financial and non-financial incentives and rewards contingent upon your work performance? The interesting thing when we ask people these questions is that usually there's a little bit of each of these six factors that play a role, but when we ask people to identify the one single most factor that they feel would help them improve their performance, people typically use number four. And when we show the results, on, as you can see here on the slide, we see that in only about 11% of the cases do people feel they need additional training in order to perform better. If we add up these totals, we see that really in only about 25% of the cases, we really need to address issues with the individual person in order to get them to perform better. They may need training, um, they may need, you know, they may not be the right fit for the job, we may need to look at some changes there, or maybe they need to be motivated, but only 25% of the time is the individual the major contributing factor. That means that 75% of the time there are factors from the environment um, that really influence how well somebody can perform on the job. Now why is it important to keep this in context? Because if we always look at, for example, training as a solution to improve the performance of people, we could be really missing the boat. We are looking, we are ignoring a lot of the other factors that really affect performance and of course training is also a fairly expensive proposition. So training will usually be part of a solution, but we really need to address all those different areas. And that is really the approach that human performance technology brings to this situation. Um, performance technology is based on a number of principles. It means that when we approach a situation, uh, rather than jumping to a certain intervention, such as training or coaching or team building or whatever it may be, we step back and we analyze what is going on here. What is the performance that we are looking for and how are people performing? And then we look at the gap that exists there and we analyze what is contributing to that, to that gap. Quite often, even with the first question when we say, how do we want people to perform? Uh, I've been in situations where I've been asked to develop training because people were not performing and when I asked them, well, how do you want them to perform, uh, the company really could not really answer that question. Uh, every manager I spoke to had a different idea about that. So it becomes very difficult to measure how well people perform if we can't even articulate to them what we really expect from them. So we marry what we want them to do, how we want them to perform, with what they're really doing, and then why is there a gap there? What causes that gap? And that can be a myriad of things. It could be training, but as we saw from the numbers earlier, quite often there are also factors in the environment that need to be addressed. So once we know, understand what the gap is and what causes that gap, we can start looking at what interventions are needed in order to close that gap and to make people perform to the standard that we are looking for and that we expect from them. Uh, those interventions could be a multitude of things, they could involve training, uh, which is a, of course a very common one, but as we saw from the statistics a few moments ago, a lot of the time there are also factors in the environment that need to change. And that can be both good news and bad news. Um, quite often changing things in the environment can actually be relatively simple. Sometimes it's complex and they may be expensive, um, difficult changes to implement, but quite often too they really are fairly cost effective and fairly easy to implement. Once we have the interventions, we of course want to implement them and then one of the key principles in performance technology is making sure that we're always at providing value. So doing some form of evaluation at the end to see are people now indeed performing to the expected level, uh, has this intervention resulted in the results that we were looking for. And then in some cases you may go back to the drawing board again, um, look at, do some analysis if it didn't work quite right, um, what was the cause of that and we repeated that process. So the, the concept of analysis, development, design, implementation and evaluation is not uncommon to us, especially if we come from the training world. It's known as the ADDIE model and it applies to, to many aspects of life. 
the evaluation is a key part of it. We always like to hold ourselves accountable and make sure that we do achieve the actual results that we were aiming for. So to summarize then, when it comes to performance improvement, training can definitely be part of the equation in a lot of cases. But performance improvement is really the goal that we aim for and training is one of the tools that we may use to get there. Performance technology is really the overall approach, the big picture view that we bring to the situation to ensure that there is true improvement in performance. So performance technology then is really a systematic approach. We use the methodology of uh, detailed analysis, cause analysis, design and development of interventions, the implementation of the, evalu the, uh, of the intervention and evaluation of the overall results. Uh, to make sure that we are achieving the targets we set for. Another distinguishing feature of performance technology is that it really takes that systemic view. It doesn't just look at the one single problem, zero in. It doesn't come in with a certain intervention in mind, but we take a systemic view looking at both the individual as well as the work environment in which people function. So for many of us who work in the field of um, training, coaching, human resource management, uh, training and development, even to some extent organizational development, it's just helpful to be aware of that perspective so that you can start asking the right questions. For individual managers within organizations who are maybe not involved at all in any of the, the human resource management side, it can be an important perspective to be aware of so that if they're dealing with an issue with one of their staff members or with their entire team, it gives them a bigger framework to draw from and hopefully develop and select a better and more effective solution. So those are the points that I wanted to share with you today. There's a lot more to talk about. There are degree programs in the field of performance technology, so in these few minutes I can't capture that, but hopefully it's given you some food for thought. And if you'd like to find out more about it, uh, ISBI is a great organization to, to get more information. Join us at the Vancouver chapter and I look forward to seeing you sometime in the future. I'm Inga Zegel and thank you for your time.